the uh, European descended population is going mm -hmm. to become a minority, you know, in the Metro yes. Vancouver area and in the Toronto area. Yes. Fairly soon. Yes. Um, what has multiculturalism got to do with that? What, what has it got to do with numbers? You know, how, ha how has multiculturalism brought that about? I think it's played a fundamental role, and, and in that regard, we're talking about the uh, combination of multicultural and immigration policy. You know, we're talking about um, a, a combination, you know, a, 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 you know just a, a, a situation whereby two government policies, cost, two pieces of our Constitution, okay, are both advocating uh, uh, the rise of non-traditional Canadian culture. Now, here's something that's extremely important to understand about this, okay? The Canadian people, right, voters, taxpayers, the Canadian public, they never endorsed it. They were never asked, they were never consulted by our government, okay, on whether our um, society, all of it, of any ethnicity, okay, wanted a policy, two policies that together will, will very likely transform our country in the greatest degree since, uh, the, you know, the, the Constitution uh, was founded in 1867. Now, it's never been positioned like that by government, by media, by the multicult, by the real estate industry, of course, who are very much connected to this whole situation. Uh, and so you're, you're connecting multiculturalism with mass immigration? With, with no, mass I mean, absolutely, because yeah. it's, it's a one-two punch. It's a combination punch. It, uh, you put those two together and you have uh, a TKO, a political social TKO, technical knockout in boxing terms, okay? And uh, that is, and, and the, the, the person getting knocked out, the entity getting knocked out is the, uh, the Canadian of European origin, of, of, uh, of uh, the descendants of um, those who built this country. You know, the, the multicult like to put forth um, this argument that, you know, oh, Canada is a multicultural nation, it has a multicultural history, it was built on multiculturalism. Okay, that, that is false. That is absolutely false. If you look at any fundamental element of Canadian society, if you look at the roots of it, for example, our government, our House of Commons, our parliament, our taxation system, right, our democratic traditions, uh, you know, down to our transportation system. Every one of these fundamentals of Canadian uh, uh, culture and heritage comes from Europe comes from Britain, okay? None of these are rooted in, you know, China or uh, Pakistan, right? So uh, when these proponents of um, multiculturalism uh, uh, put forth this argument, it is, it's completely misleading. Another reason is Canada's history, Canada's approximately 150 years old. Multicultural policy is 26 years old. So how could Canada be a nation that is rooted in multiculturalism. It's false, okay? And getting back to immigration, immigration is a policy also that is non-democratic in nature. It was never endorsed by the Canadian public. And uh, furthermore, uh, a lot of people may not realize that it's also never been justified on an economic basis by our government or any other uh, uh, think group or uh, 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 you know organization, nonprofit uh, organization uh, has never produced a study that says that um, Im uh, immigration and let's use say within the last 50 years because there there isn't one before that either. But just to not make it appear that you know we're talking about immigration from a hundred you know years ago, um, there's no study, there's no report, and. Uh, We've even solicited uh, the Minister of Immigration, uh, Chris Alexander, on that subject, his office, and put uh, quite a bit of emphasis on trying to get some real answers. 
nothing, zero, okay? So, you know, these are non, immigration and multicultural policy are unjustified, okay? Economically and culturally. And they are, in reality, non-democratic in nature. Uh, something to be added to that, you know, what, just one thing about that, right? If you look at, in general, at the multicult and immigration in Canada, right, you will find an absolute lack of democratic process, okay? Now, this is an interesting coincidence or phenomenon, right? Because these two policies together are transforming our nation in unprecedented manner. manner. And, and no one voted for it and no one asked for it, right? So it's not kind of interesting that uh, the, the Canadian public, Canadian society has been omitted from the entire conversation about this profound transformation of our country. Interesting, where, where else do they have a lack of democracy in the world? I mean, what nation, you know, kind of comes to mind when you think of uh, no democracy, you know? So, kind of an interesting uh, uh, parallel there. I mean, you know, I've always found that to be uh, something worth thinking about. <laughs> you know, you, you, earlier you, you mentioned the word demise when you described mm. what was happening uh, to Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody uh, that, that we know uh, has described multiculturalism as a assisted suicide. <laughs> What do you I would say I would say that multiculturalism is legislated cultural suicide. That's what I'd say. And when, in particular, when that's combined with unjustified mass immigration, uh, I mean they they go hand in hand. You know, how, how much of a part uh, do you think uh, the ethnic groups are playing in uh, mass immigration? Like, are, are you are you saying they're pressuring that uh, pressuring the federal government to maintain? current high immigration intake? Um, what, what I would say is that I would, first of all, I would never make a statement uh, along the lines of a community, right? A community is doing anything, you know, to, to it's not a community, all right? You know, that gets into a, a really, you know, kind of a, a, a sketchy area of, of blame, you know, and this, 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 you know, it, it's it's not. It actually has nothing to do with, Who's you know, a community. Yeah. It has to do with community leaders. It has yeah. to do with government uh, leaders, and that would be from, you know, all ethnicities, because there's a bit of variety in our uh, in our uh, legislatures and in our uh, in our House of Commons uh, um, at present. And and there are people actually pushing for that to change and for you know people to be. Uh, moved into government positions uh, solely based on their ethnicity. And arguably that, that, you know, I call it reverse racism. Because if, you know, if we think about this a bit, uh, uh, Parliament has 308 seats. That's a finite amount of seats. We're not adding seats. So if affirmative action measures, okay, bring e um, ethnic, you know, Canadians, non-white Canadians, purposefully into office, that means someone else must leave, okay? That is, is it's a bit of a recent phenomenon, but it's, it's, it's probably the most dangerous that, that has occurred. And, and there is a movement right now to do that very thing. It began in, in the private sector, it began in, in the business and in the corporate world um, with uh, diversity. The term they use for this is diversity. Banking, Canadian banks are a very big area for diversity, meaning you, you, you know, move out a bunch of uh, old school Canadians and bring in the so-called new school um, Canadians. But when this progresses, to the, a government level, okay, which it is now, okay, this is something that's very important for the Canadian public to understand. And, you know, they, they don't, like, generally, they're not, you know, we're not, we're not understanding so much of this because it is simply uh, not in our newspapers. It's not in the media. It's protected. The, the, the media wants, uh, 
or the government, uh, uh, you know, has is, is got a tight relationship with the media, and uh, you, you don't go and say, you know, to, to a very large degree, what the government, you know, does not want you to say, or, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's that kind of situation. So as a result, um, the Canadian public has been, has been just um, kept in the dark. You know, what can I say? I mean, uh, it's, it's a fact that, that if, you know, half a billion dollars has gone from uh, Canadian taxpayers to these multicult organizations, and half a billion is, a compl I'm sure, is a completely lowball estimate. You Over know. how long a period? Oh, I, I think it's a billion dollars over 20 years, I'd say. But, you see, the, these aren't statistics that are easily verified, right? Because... This is the multicult. The multicult does not operate on a on a um, public level. They they kind of like to work in the shadows.